So um, as part of our transit equity network, um, we wanted to share some updates with a lot of folks. And um, if you're in the transit equity network, um, my guest is no stranger, um, Sarah Catalanato um, from PIS, New York City, um, who we also hosted a school bus safety panel back in October. So if you haven't watched it, um, please go to our Transit Equity Network YouTube channel and watch it. But Sarah, thanks. It's good to see you again. It's great. Yeah. Um, transit equity seems to be really strong this year. I'm seeing a lot about it online and um, celebrating Mrs. Rosa Parks. Absolutely. Now, tell us, since we, we did Transit Equity Day last year, as well as with the school bus panel, um, what updates have been happening in New York City as far as school bus transportation? Okay, well, I mean, the problems are sort of um, coming out of hiding now to the point that a broader um, segment of the of the population is aware and not just the um, most affected, you know, riders and families and workers and, and school staff. Um, one thing that did happen was that the uh, union that represents a majority of our school bus um, workers here almost went on strike. So there was a lot of attention um, you know, around the, the news and um, the parents more than ever before were front and center with a lot of support of saying um, to the city that whatever little band-aids that they were offering that was supposed to alleviate if they wasn't, you know, fully staffed buses was not adequate. Um, these uh, ride shares, which I can get a little more into, uh, they require the parent to get in the car with the student there and back and then go where they have to go and come back and get the kid again and back home. And that makes it almost impossible for people to keep their regular job. You know, so that was dismissed by the parents um, and other things. Uh, we kept in very good contact with the leadership of the union, which is Amalgamated Transit Union Local 1181. And um, it took a long time, but they did get um, the companies to go along with improvements that bring them somewhat back to where they were before, you know, the last 10 years of kind of like um, bad uh, deterioration of the of the rights and, and the payments and the wages and benefits. So, so, you know, the parents were thanked for our part in it and um, that bond is, you know, remains strong. We do still have a shortage of, um, qualified folks doing the work, as with a lot of places, what um, what we are pushing for now is that the city, you know, despite the fact that they do subcontract this to mostly to private um, bus companies, is that they got to take some responsibility to like advertise or have recruitment fairs um, and you know, make it accessible to people who might be really good at it, but they don't have that seed money to go get their licensing and their training and their certification. Mm -hmm. um, we saw from speaking with folks in Boston, Massachusetts, that that was done. It was actually written into the agreement between their union, the company, and the city. And it resulted in day one of the school term in September, there, you know, there was every bus route was that. So it can be done, you know. Um, so we're not taking no for an answer on that. That's wonderful. And and we definitely thank the good folks at ATU 1181 for all the hard work with helping you all uh, get to that point. Um, and, you know, as kind of mentioned into the, the webinar that we did last year, um, most people don't think of school bus transportation as public transit. Yeah, like how how do you what would what would be your response to to change that narrative? Well, 
in New York in particular, it's probably people say the largest bus fleet there is is the is the school bus. You know, there's like almost nine thousand um, yellow vehicles scooting around, and um, we our kids are the public; they're part of it, and it's public education, and so it really should be considered a public service. Um, we marched with the union in, in uh, Labor Day and they were near all the other transportation folks. You know, it's kind of a, this overlap between transportation and education. Um, it, it, it does get treated, I think, by society more as transportation. But to us, the um, especially for students who have the busing because of its part of their special education services, the um, the person, the second adult on the bus, whether you call them a monitor, a matron, or attendant, or aide, they are actually um, working for the school system. They are providing what's considered a related service of the individualized education program, just like a speech therapist, just like a a counselor or some, you know, other um, provider with special skills and training. So we would like for um, the school systems everywhere, you know, to embrace and take full responsibility for this as just like any other service for the children, not just logistics of getting from point A to point B. It's who's on that bus going from point A to point B and they need the respect and um yeah a couple of the that. developments i wanted to mention um there's a coalition of lawyers the education law task force in new york city and since the uh summer they put together with help from ourselves and other um parent councils who work on special education a uh federal official civil rights complaint to the Office of Civil Rights of the uh, U.S. Department of Education alleging that there's discrimination because uh, students with disabilities have a rougher time getting to school on time and safely than other students. Um, and that has been, there's been one meeting between those lawyers now with the federal lawyers and, you know, something else will be on the horizon. And um, these type of processes take a lot of time, but we're going to do our part from this, you know, busing rights movement to um, promote the fact that this is happening, to use it as leverage to get these violations to stop, you know, and um, there's a whole list of remedies being proposed there, um, which, you know, will probably need to be fine tuned and some will, will happen and some might not, but that's um, something that has not really happened, you know, in the time that we've been doing this. And um, that's the legal strategy. As far as the electoral strategy, we are, you know, trying again. We've kind of a uh, month behind, but there's a, a window now to collect petitions for a ballot referendum for a school bus bill of rights, which uh, emphasizes creating a commission um, and it falls under engagement of marginalized groups in the um, city charter uh, to have a commission that is drawn from elected leadership of parents, workers, educators, and the disability rights movement, the self-advocates, the individuals um, to set the policy and, you know, to drive what happens in the system of school busing rather than leaving it up to just kind of folks in an office who have IT skills and, you know, got a job because they were already yeah. known in the Board of Education, but they've not living through what we're living through. And, you know, they listen, but then they do what they want to do. So 
those are um that's the goal that's the goal of the school bus bill of rights but it's a it's a prohibitive process it's difficult so we're going to need fundraising and we're going to need you know publicity and we're going to need boots on the ground for that absolutely and where can people find you if they want to get involved with all of this well we are um as P-I-S-T space N-Y-C on Facebook. There's a group that uh, constantly has like back and forth conversations with parents and, and drivers about their experiences. Uh, there's um, a page by the same name. Um, there's a Twitter and it's just P-I-S-T N-Y-C. And our website, which has resources and the gallery page that, you know, presents the School Bus Bill of Rights uh, details in various modalities, video, a sign language, et cetera. That is also P-I-S-T-M-I-C dot org. You can, you know, that's up all the time. Absolutely. Um, Sarah, always wonderful to have you. Um, and I absolutely commend you all for the great work doing in New York City. Um, and everyone, please go follow the links. Um, Sarah Catalonato, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, transit equity. <laughs> That's right.